didn't expect that. You were here precisely 726 seconds before I anticipated. Interesting. I am Paler Sakaki. <laughs> Dr. Paler Sakaki, the chief of Aragami Tech and R&D. I'm certain we'll be seeing quite a lot of each other over the coming days. Welcome aboard, new type. As you can see, I'm still a touch busy at the moment. Things to do, screens to watch, uh... Johannes, why don't you do your speech thing, and then I'll go. Sure. Though, Doctor, I think it is high time you learn to prioritize between work and personal research. Thank you for taking part in the aptitude test. I know it is not pleasant. My name is Johannes von Schicksal. I'm the director of the Far East Branch, reporting directly to Fenrir. Once again, congratulations on your acceptance. I know you shall do great things in your time here. Don't let the speechifying fool you. He's an ex-tech guy. No doubt the new type medical exam is calling to him. A tech guy? Do keep in mind that I hung up my lab coat because we have you now, Doctor. Once a scientist, always a scientist, Johannes. Perhaps. In any case, if I may return to my speechifying. The Fenrir Corporation has many goals, of which you are now a critical part. Your direct duties, while crucial, are rather simple. You God Eaters hunt down and destroy Aragami and gather their materials. These materials are then converted into resources. They help maintain this base and supply the upcoming Aegis project. These numbers? There's no way they can be right! The Aegis project will defend humanity in our utopia. A fortress at sea, impregnable to Aragami assault, located near the deepest part of the Sea of Japan. Ah, of course, of course! Once the final phase of the project is complete, humanity will be able to live in peace again, free from these monsters. <laughs> Amazing! The new types are a miracle! Taylor, I am trying to teach something! Oh, right! <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just these readings. They're beyond our wildest hopes. Then it seems the future of humanity is in good hands. You will do us proud. And on that note, I shall place you in the doctor's hands and take my leave. Paler, be sure to send the results. I believe we're ready to begin. Go ahead and lie down on the bed just there. As the exam begins, you will feel a bit drowsy. I assure you there's nothing to worry about. When you awaken, you'll be in your quarters. It's a, uh, catnap, so to speak. Shouldn't be more than a few hours. 10,800 seconds at most. Sleep well.
first rule of combat is this. Knowledge of one's surroundings is the line between life and death. Take a look around. Excellent. Now focus straight ahead once more. Second rule of combat. Keep moving. Here's a primer on the most effective forms of traversal in the field. There are two platforms in the training area. Go ahead and climb atop them. High ground is an advantage that can't be denied, both in scouting and actual combat scenarios. Always be sure to keep one eye on your stamina. If you lose your breath out there, it may cost more than your pride. Why don't you go for a quick run? Get that heart rate up. Seems like a suitable warm-up. Now, on to the basics of combat training. The weapon in your hand is called a God Arc, the only tool that can slay Aragami, bound to you for life. We've just released some Aragami mock-ups into the training chamber. Strike them down. Transform from a blade into gun form for ranged attacks. Transfer now to gun form. Let loose a few rounds against the Aragami. Attacks consume a measure of Oracle power. You'll have to monitor that as well. Now, take the lessons I've taught you and defeat the Aragami with a combination of tactics. Today's basic training. You are dismissed. session. Slay the enemy. Be aware they are tougher than what you're used to, and will require some advanced tactics. Stay sharp. When there's no hope of avoiding an attack entirely, open your shield to absorb the brunt of the assault. Keeping your 
yourself in fighting trim is the only way to survive. It does, however, take a while to bandage yourself properly. Using stun grenades will buy you some time and space. Now, I think I'll have you fight the origami from before one more time. Let's see how you fare. Your god arc has another special trait that you should make good use of in the field. Devour form. This allows you to take oracle energy directly from the enemies you face in the wild. By siphoning this oracle, you can temporarily increase your own strength, even to unheard of levels. Wait for an opening to present itself, and then strike with Devour Form. From there, enter Burst Mode, and finish the beast. materials from its core. These materials are critical to advancing our research, as well as earning enhancements to your god arc itself. Alternatively, you can collect the scraps that line the field during battle. Just to prove you can do it, please go around and pick up the ones we've littered about the training area. Training will conclude in 20 seconds. It seems you've passed boot camp simply enough. Next, you'll go up against the real thing. Fight well, God Eater. Lindo, the director said that if I saw you, I should tell you he wishes to meet with you. Awesome. Sounds like you didn't see me then. Oh ho! Hey there, Rook. The name's Lindo Amamia. According to various documents, I am your superior officer. But I never paid much attention to that crap, and neither should you. In game, I want you to be someone who I know has my back, and I'll have yours. Oh, who's this? A new recruit? Yep, and you're totally ruining my big scary speech about our brutal coda, so shoot. Of course, sir. You're the boss, sir. Now I lost my place, so we're cool, yeah? I'm sending you out into battle, and I know that's scary, but look, I'm gonna be right here with you. Got it? Oh, and look at the time. It's half past mission. Let's go. This place has seen better days for sure. All right, Rook, we're gonna get some hands-on experience today. You got three big rules. Don't die. If you're in danger, frickin' run. And last, hide. Well, not hide, use cover. Stealth wins fights. Wait, is that four big rules then? I'm gonna bottom line it for you. 
survive. Actually, yeah, let's say one big rule, survive. All right, kid, let's get this show on the road. Fighting little ogre tails today. It should be a pretty basic hunt. Nothing crazy or unexpected. I know it's your first time in the field. Remember to watch the movements and strike some small. Yeah, so you shouldn't stand right in front of the giant monster. Just hand out compliments. So when I say you moved well out there for a recruit, I mean it.
there you are. We've got a lot of ground to cover. So what do you say we just jump right in? Now, what do you think an origami is? Lots of words come to mind. The apex predator, the devourer of mankind, God's given flesh. Well, those are all right, in a way. These phrases, while dramatic, aren't misconceptions. Rather, you could say they simply evolved from wonderment. The speaker clearly has their eyes fixed on the phenomena before them. Today, we are striving for a deeper answer. Tell me, have you ever wondered from whence the origami come? History books tell us that they just appeared, as though from the air itself. Since then, their numbers have grown. Strange, no? As though they are ripping through the very core of evolutionary process. <sighs> hey, hey, does this lecture have an intermission? Or a point? Our job's to kill them. What does it matter where they come from? Oh, it matters! Whoa! Aragami have no heart. Neither do they have a brain or a digestive system or spinal fluids. Frail humans that we are, a powerful strike to the chest would cripple or kill us. But no, that won't bring down an origami. You see, these beasts are clusters of oracle cells, each individually a single cell organism of its own, ever devouring the others. Mad? Ha! Perhaps. But each origami is a colony of hundreds, nay thousands of individual life forms, each striving to survive. And this dangerous, deadly, elegant fusion of cells cannot be destroyed by conventional weapons. They are impervious to all assault. So, how then are we meant to survive? How can we defeat such a powerful predator? Um, well, they die when we hit them a lot with the God Ark, or shoot them a lot with the God Ark, so... Precisely! A God Ark! A biological weapon infused with the same oracle cells that inhabit an origami's body. That's the key! They are the only weapons capable of cutting through their ever-fusing oracle cells. But just cutting them down will do no good. The rogue cell colonies will grow and heal, or worse, form new monsters to be defeated. No, there is only one way to ensure victory. Tearing out the core, the cells that serve as a control center. But of course, such a task is challenging to say the least. Even with our god arcs, we have no way to deliver such a devastating blow. At some point, people recognized in these monsters, in their immortality, the spirits of the many gods once worshipped here. They deemed these creatures aragami, and we fight them still. I think that's as good a place as any to hold for today. As homework, please refer to the Norn database for more on the history of aragami. Dismissed!